we can significantly simplify our, um, our combined system of the continuity equation and the momentum equation if we make what is known as the incompressible approximation. This is one that we will use quite often as it allows us to, to drastically simplify the class of motions and it, it applies to a large, large variety of motions in the natural world. To get an idea of how this approximation works and its power, we start with the continuity equation for density. d by dt of rho plus u dot grad rho plus rho times the divergence of u is equal to zero. This is the way that density in a fluid changes as it is either advected by the fluid or as the fluid compresses. This is our compression term right here, compression. The first set of terms is the Lagrangian derivative of density d rho d t. And we can see that this equation can be written in terms of the Lagrangian derivative as d rho d t is equal to minus rho times the divergence of u. So the density in the Lagrangian sense changes only from the fluid compressing or expanding. Now in the incompressible approximation, our assumption that we make is of incompressibility, which states that d rho d t is equal to zero, which is our minus rho div u. And this is often written more compactly by just saying that the divergence of u is equal to zero. This is often considered the hallmark of the incompressible equations. Div u is equal to zero. In a divergenceless flow, if you squeeze the flow, it squirts out the sides. There is no ability to make the flow converge or diverge. Div u is equal to zero. Okay, so what does this buy us? This actually substantially simplifies our, our coupled system of continuity and momentum equations and leads to a solvable system of equations. And to show this, I will combine our incompressible approximation from the continuity equation with the momentum equation, which is that d by dt of u plus u dot grad u, that's our advection term, is equal to minus grad p over rho. Now, we might note that since we've just assumed that, um, that div u is zero and that the Lagrangian derivative of density is thereby zero, we might note that density itself is a constant. This is a constant here. And so this can actually be pulled inside the derivative for rho. It's just a number after all. Um, or the derivative for p, and our derivative is actually operating on the quantity p over rho. We'll often give this a special kind of funny name, pomega, which is defined as p over rho. This is sometimes also called the kinematic pressure. And you can see that, especially for an ideal gas, this has the sense of temperature because if P is rho R T, then pomega is equal to just P over rho, which is just R T. All right, so what did this bias them? Well, we have, we have this system. We have um, that div U equals zero, and we have that D by D T of U plus u dot grad, the nonlinear advection of u, is equal to now writing in terms of pomega minus grad pomega. And this, this is a solvable system. We have two variables. We have u vector and we have scalar pomega. We have two equations. We have our momentum equation 
and we have our continuity equation. Our momentum equation is a vector equation. Our continuity equation is a scalar equation. Our two equations for two variables gives us a closed system that we can solve. In some senses, the vector equation gives us u, and this continuity equation, even though pomega doesn't show up in it, gives us pomega, and pomega acts as almost uh, a Lagrange multiplier to ensure that the flow follows incompressibility. This critical assumption gives us a system we can solve, which is a major step in the, um, in the hydrodynamic equa equations, as otherwise to solve it, we would have to come up with some sort of closure for the thermal equation. Here we only have a continuity and momentum equation, and we have sufficient to solve the system. If we were doing compressible dynamics where div u was not equal to zero, we'd need some additional equation since we'd have a relationship between p and rho, and for that we need a thermal equation to explain the evolution of temperature or pressure.